Hi, I'm Mr Gore. I'm uh, Head of Key Stage 5 History at Culverson High School. Um, I run a brilliant department with uh, very experienced members of staff. Uh, hope you enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation and if there's anything I don't cover and you would like to uh, clarify, please feel free to contact me. Cheers. History is a rigorous academic and challenging subject that is an increasingly popular choice with students at Cobbleton Sixth. So from your perspective, why should you consider doing it? History itself is highly regarded by universities, not only as a discipline in its own right, but also for students hoping to pursue careers in journalism, politics and law. Here, the skills are not only considered, well, are not only transferable and crucial, but are considered preferable in creating, you know, tomorrow's critical, objective and independent thinkers. History, however, is not just about the academic. History is about life in general, because it gives you an insight into how the world around you is shaped and driven. It makes you a more rounded human being. It makes you a critical thinker. It means that in interviews, you perform better and stronger because you've got that little sense of confidence and depth that history provides. History essentially is a key to your future, if you like, in that sense. Um, at Cobbleston, another reason for doing it uh, is, is the results have been very good over the last few years and have been following an upward trend. Uh, and that no small measure is to the team of teachers that we have at the school. The department is led by myself at A-level, Gore, uh, and I'm responsible for the tutor provision as well as the NEA uh, in old terms, uh, in old money if you like, uh, the coursework. Where coursework is concerned, we study uh, American civil rights between 1861 and 1965. Mr. Akabuchi, who's head of department, is responsible for Cold War provision. And between us, make of this what you will, we have over 40 years teaching experience. We in turn are able to be supported by Mrs. Barlow and Mr. Shefford, two quality younger teachers who had a bit of flair to the department. Again, in choosing A-level history, one of the strengths of my team is the support they provide for their students. At this level, while it is important to cultivate independent critical thinkers, Students need to know that you are there to support them. Support them in their understanding of their history, support them in their ability to access it, and support them in their ability to, and confident, to build confidence in their application of understanding. In history, we do this. My staff are supportive, approachable, specialists in their fields, and are there to ensure the academic success of our students. Cobbleston, we follow the AQA course with units in Tudor England, the Cold War and American Civil Rights. In year 12, we study the reigns of Henry VII and VIII, a world of transition and change, from England's last medieval king to its first Renaissance prince, who in turn morphs into a monster. In year 12, the Cold War explores the origins of this defining 20th century conflict, exploring its roots in the battlefields of World War II, seeing how this in turn develops across not just Europe but the globe throughout the 1950s. In the summer term, students then explored a world of American civil rights benchmark in the dates 1861 to 1965 as a basis for their NEA. The period is founded, is obviously framed by the iconic figures of Lincoln and King and the idea is in turn to examine the landscape in between and understand how civil rights actually moves forward. In year 13, we build on our studies in year 12, exploring the short reigns of Edward and Bloody Mary before exploring the worlds of Elizabeth's golden age. In the Cold War, the focus is on détente and the end, the iconic collapse of the Berlin Wall and the USSR in 1991. Where the NEA is concerned, students will be expected to have chosen their question and will be carrying out their own research with the idea of submitting it by Christmas of year 13. As for the assessment process itself, it's a fairly straightforward one. 
As I mentioned before, the NEA will be completed by students uh, about Christmas of year 13, and this will carry 20% of the final mark. The exams, well, there'll be two exams at the end of year 13 itself in the summer term. The papers are themselves two and a half hours long, and both are weighted at 40%. In terms of the format of the papers, they are fairly straightforward and very simple, and, and they similar to each other. In the tutor paper, you will study first uh, three interpretations and have to tell the examiner you know, how convincing you find them. You will then choose two out of three essays. Similarly, in the Cold War paper, uh, you don't do interpretations, you look at sources, and you have to make an assessment on how valuable they are. And again, two out of three essays. Okay, where results are concerned, the trend has been up over the last four years, uh, as I've suggested, and results have been very good. Last year, 83% of students achieved A star to C, while 100% passed. Uh, this is a, you know, something that has been a, a key feature of the department over the last four or five years that, uh, since I've been there. And similarly, the 83 has built up slightly on what had gone the year before and the year before that. The department is constantly reflecting its practice, as, as again I've stated, and again, what's good is the sense that while these results are good and while we're proud of the results we've achieved, it's, it is an ongoing process, and again, hopefully next year, a stronger set of the results still, uh, based on how students are performing at the minute. So this is what slide says, and obviously, coming to the end of the presentation, why study history at Cobbleston? Well, first and foremost, you get a good deal. Yeah, the teaching staff between them have uh, 50 years teaching experience between them. As I pointed out, most of that is myself and Mr. Akebuchi. Uh, but more importantly still, perhaps, is that the staff uh, are still passionate about what they do. I might have been teaching uh, for 20 years, but I still love uh, the rigor of A-level and academic research. Um, so in that sense, also, what's important is you get teachers who teach to their specialism. In a sense, people aren't too horned in to do a level provision in history. We are literally experts in our field. With that said, I myself have been an AQA examiner for four years. Um, and so again, and again, this year is something again I, I hope to do. We are reflective practices within the department, which means we currently reflect on what we do. So again, it's not there's no complacency in the department. Um, we're always considering how we develop uh, and enhance that learning experience for students. So again, I think, you know, if you choose history at A-level, you, you get a very, very good deal. Also, empathy, I think, is an important thing. I think um, we're staff and students, you know, we're concerned. We have a very good uh, understanding of that student experience. You know, we, we're not detached for it. Uh, so in that sense, again, what we have is cultivate a department that's supportive uh, of our student body, and again, that's clearly evidence in the you know what the students themselves say about the subject. And our teaching is informed, you know, which I sort of highlight a minute ago. You know, again, we not only are we constantly reflecting our practice, but we're constantly within that framework where students themselves are concerned are able to adapt and support individual students, which I think is crucial uh, in, in this day and age. Certainly where the coursework is concerned, you know, we use the tutorials to again with a very personalized approach to the study of history. Okay, so that is the end of the presentation. Hopefully, uh, this has been a constructive use of your time and it gives you some understanding of whether history is the right choice for you or not. I am also quite conscious that in my presentation, I have maybe left more questions and answers or there's those little niggling questions still at the back of your mind that maybe haven't been addressed, which is not a problem. If that is the case, please feel free to contact me on uh, my email address cited below, no matter how trivial uh, perhaps the question might seem. Uh, so thank you very much for listening and good night.